Hi. Now, if you've got a calculator, a scientific calculator, say something like this, the chances are then when you do a square root of a number, let's say the square root of 56, when you press equals, what you get is a display something like this. 2 times the square root of 14. We just say 2 root 14 for short. And what this is, is the exact value of the square root of 56. If you try to get the square root of 56 as a decimal, your calculator would show this decimal. But in reality, this decimal carries on forever and ever and never recurs. When we get square roots like this, which give us infinitely long non-recurring numbers, we say that it's a third. So let's just put that back to the display, 2 root 14. Let's try another one. Let's try, say, the square root of 27. If you try to take the square root of 27, you would get, again, an infinitely long non-recurring decimal. But if we simplify this and give it in the exact form, we'll press equals, it comes up as 3 times root 3. 3 root 3 for short, the exact value. So how does the calculator give us these answers? What's the mathematics behind simplifying the square root of 27? Well, that's the purpose of this particular tutorial. I want to show you how we can go about simplifying then thirds. Now, when you're working with thirds and you're trying to find the square root of the product of two numbers, let's say we call them A and B, A multiplied by B, it is exactly the same as working out the square root of A, one of the numbers, multiplied by the square root of the other value, b. This rule then is one that you need to learn and it only works if you've got a multiplication sign then between your values. It won't work if you've got a plus or a minus, okay? So do take care on this. And I'll demonstrate that it works first of all, just with something that we know the answer to. Let's say the square root, for instance, of 36. We know the answer is 6, but let's just say we split this up into two numbers that multiply together that make 36. Let's say 9 times 4. 9 fours are 36. And according to this rule, it should be the same as the square root of each one multiplied together. So the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 4. Square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. And indeed, 3 times 2 gives 6, the square root of 36. So it checks out, OK? So this rule it seems to work. Now, let's just try it then with, say, the square root of 27. Root of 27. Now, when you're doing questions like this, you need to look at your number here and break it up into factors which are square numbers. Okay, now, what do I mean by square numbers? Well, square numbers are numbers that can be square rooted exactly. And the first square number, other than 1, is 2 squared, which is 4. Next square number is 3 squared, 9. 4 squared comes next, which is 16. Then 5 squared, 25. And the other ones would be 36, 49, 64, 81, and then 100. Okay? And there'll be, obviously, there's more square numbers, but these are the common ones that you're going to find yourself needing to remember. So when I look at square root of 27, does that contain any square numbers which are factors? Well, yes, 9. 9 threes are 27. So I can think of this as the square root then of 9 multiplied by 3. And then, according to the rule up here, this is the same as the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root 
of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. And then we'll drop the multiplication sign here and just write it as 3 root 3. So this is the answer that we have on the calculator. So hopefully you can see how it works now. So what about you trying this one? Square root, say, of 50. Just give you a moment to pause the video. Have a go at it. OK, so how did you get on then? Well, square root of 50 contains 25, which is a square number. It can easily be rooted. So we can think of this as the root of 25 times 2. Using the rule, this is the same as the square root of 25 multiplied by square root of 2. And the root of 25 is 5. And then square root of 2 hasn't got a nice clean value. It's not a square number. So we just write it as 5 then root 2. So I hope you got that one. Now, quite often you're going to get, though, very big numbers. And this is the purpose of my next example, to show you how you can go about handling square roots of big numbers. Let's say we take the square root of 320. Now, I'm looking for a square number that is a factor of 320. And you might have spotted one. But I've spotted that 64 is a factor of 320. I'll show you what we could do, though, if we hadn't have spotted that 64 was a factor. But I'll just do this first of all for you. It's 64 times 5. And so this breaks down to the root of 64 multiplied by the root of 5. And the square root of 64 is 8. Root 5 is just left as root 5. So we just have 8 root 5. But suppose you didn't see that. Let's just run through it again and take our 320. Suppose you can't even spot any square numbers that are factors of 320. But you might say, but I can see that 32 times 10 gives 320. Let's just work with that. 320 is the same then as 32 times 10. Now, 32 is more manageable because 32 is the same as 16 times 2. So I could see that as 16 times 2, 16 being a square number. OK. And what about 10? I could split 10 up into 2 times 5, for instance. Neither of these are square numbers, the 2 or the 5. But now I can spot that I could group those two twos together. And now we've got a square number. We've got 16 times 4. And then we've got times 5. And this will now break down using this rule. And by the way, you'll notice here we've got three things being multiplied together. It will work just as equally with more than two things being multiplied together. So we can see this as the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 5. And six, the root of 16 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. As for the square root of 5, don't know what that is. But I can group this together now as 4 twos are 8. And then multiply by root 5 just gives me 8 root 5. And that's what we had here. Now this is not the only way that you could break down 320. I'll leave it up to you just to uh, have a go at other combinations. You try it. See if you can get down to 8 root 5. It's a great way of just learning how to do these things just purely by experimentation. And you can always check out your answers anyway on the calculator afterwards. But you often ask these kind of questions when you haven't got a calculator, OK? And so it's useful to be able to just work without a calculator. So I hope that's given you some idea anyway. All right.